In this video, I will show you how to simulate TA cloning and Lucigen's GC cloning in Snapgene. TA and GC cloning are two simple cloning techniques that do not require restriction enzymes. Instead, the procedure relies on the natural addition of A or G overhangs to the free prime end of PCR products by some DNA polymerase enzymes. These overhangs enable PCR products to be ligated into linearized vectors containing complementary T or C overhangs. So let's jump into Snapgene and simulate an example of TA and GC cloning. In the file I have open, I have the sequence containing the human MT-MMP3 coding sequence, as indicated by this feature. I want to perform TA cloning using this feature as the insert. To simulate TA cloning in Snapgene, Go to Actions, TA or GC Cloning, and select TA Cloning. The file I had open, containing my gene of interest, is automatically selected as the insert file. You can change the insert file by using the Source of Insert drop-down. Next, I need to select the region that I want to clone. Since I just want the coding sequence, I will select this feature. I also need to ensure the option Use as a template for PCR is selected. For the next step, I will go to the Linearized Vector tab. It is here that I will need to specify the vector for the cloning. In the drop-down menu to the right, there are a list of commercially available TA cloning vectors to choose from, or you can use a custom vector from a new file by using the drop-down menu. For this example, I will select the p-target vector. Notice how the p-target linearized vector contains T overhangs. Next, I will switch to the last tab named product. The final step is to create the PCR primers that will amplify my region of interest and leave an A overhang to enable ligation into the p-target vector. This is easily done through Snapgene's ability to design suitable primers for you. Simply select the choose PCR primers option. You can adjust the desired melting temperature of the PCR primers if you wish, but I will leave this at 60 degrees, which is the default setting. Finally, I will select the Choose Primers button. The resulting product is now visible. You will notice that the insert in the schematic has R overhangs, which signifies an A or a G base. In the product, those with an A overhang will bind to the T complementary bases on the linearized TA vector. In the lower right, you will notice I also have a warning. This is because the insert is compatible in both orientations due to the nature of the TA cloning technique. If you'd like to create a separate file for each insert orientation that you will get in the lab, you can check the option to make a file containing an alternative product with flipped insert. I will finish off the TA cloning simulation by giving the file a name, and I'll click the clone button. Now let's move on to GC cloning. GC cloning is very similar to TA cloning, since TAC polymerase adds either an A or a G overhang to the 3' prime end. This means that those fragments with G overhangs can be ligated into linearized vectors containing C overhangs. To perform GC cloning, go to Actions, TA or GC cloning, and select GC cloning. Again, I will select the MT MMP3 sequence as the source of insert, and I will also click on the coding sequence feature and ensure the Use as a template for PCR option is selected. I will now switch to the Linearized Vector tab. There are some commercially available vectors that you can use, or you can select your own. For this example, I will select the PGC blue vector. Notice how this vector has C overhangs. As before, I will go to the product tab and select choose PCR primers. The only difference here to TA cloning is that the option to add five prime phosphates to primers is selected by default. This is important because the linearized GC cloning vectors are dephosphorylated. I will now click the Choose Primers button. Just like the TA cloning simulation, you will notice that the insert in the schematic has R overhangs, which signifies an A or a G base. In the product, those of a G overhang will bind to the C complementary bases on the linearized GC vector. I will finish off the GC cloning simulation by giving the file a name and clicking the clone button. And that wraps up this video tutorial. In this tutorial, you have learned how to use Snapgene to quickly and easily simulate TA and GC cloning. 
For more information about simulating other cloning techniques in SnapGene, check out the other tutorials on the SnapGene website. If you found this video useful, please leave a like, it really does help support the channel. If you've got a question, pop it down in the comments below. Also, consider subscribing for more weekly tutorials.